Okay, welcome to lesson five. This time we're gonna take a look at the uh, uh, cabbage rows. Hopefully you have painted lessons two, three, and four when you uh, got some of those spiral roses down. Now we're gonna look at stroking the bowl of the rose just a little bit different. Uh, here is one of the lessons um, that we have. It's coming up with the cabbage rose. And the difference between the cabbage rose and the spiral rose is now the petals are going across coming down this way as opposed to stroking this way on the bowl. We're going to stroke this way coming and building the, the petals that way. And so there's just a couple of things that are just a little bit different as far as the decoration of the rose. But the basic setup of the rose is going to be the same. Now when you come in and, you, and you're painting the rose, you can start in the back of the rose. You can start in the front of the rose. It doesn't really make a difference as, you know, like I say, I'm not teaching a step-by-step -step process. Put this petal, this petal, this petal, this petal. I'm teaching you how to paint a flower. Then you need to relax and just paint that flower. Let's just take a look at uh, some of it. Again, I like to put a little bit of the background color on. And I'm just going to use my brush here uh, just, just to put a little bit of background color on. This helps me control the, the flower. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I'll put a little bit of that onto the surface there. Not a whole lot that you get puddles or anything because puddles will, um, will interfere with what you're going to do. And again, I have it prepped just like I did with just the bag color with just a little bit of sealer. This is the, the Hansa yellow and um, brown and a little bit of red. You can uh, have any kind of color you want, but I have quite a few of these practice boards pet up like this, and I love this color. It's kind of a rich color. Let's uh, go ahead and let's just paint a uh, cabbage rose here. Now, the this one is the more uh, of a beginning one, which has a nice light edge where you can see the roses uh, very clearly. And then later on, towards the end of the lessons, you are going to be doing the larger tray here, which uh, follows exactly the same type of thing, but doesn't have quite as many edges uh, developing this way. And you also have these uh, trays here, which the, the, uh, the petals are pulled more down. So you can pull the petals down or you can pull them across here. It doesn't make a difference here. But you notice that petals curve this way on this side of the bowl, curve this way on this side of the bowl. Everything's got to round down. So here's halfway. They curve this way and they curve this way. And the most important thing about, especially with the stroke rules, is that you're emulating those particular curves. So let's get into the painting of, uh, of this one here. Let me just set this off to the side here. Okay, let's get into the painting of, uh, of, of a cabbage rose here. First is um, you can put, start right with cool color. You can start with warm color, or you can start with a color for your rose. And I'm just going to take a little soft yellow. Let's just put a real soft yellow in here. There, there's a bunch of different ways, and in the lessons, I'm going to show you all different kinds of ways to start them out. And again, I don't want you to remember the steps. I want you to be able to paint the rose. I'm putting a now why. Why am I putting some color on here? This is just going to give me something to work into. I feel I have more control over the color and the stroke when I have something down for me to work into into the flower. So we set up our flower. Just you know, this time I'm going to set up a nice kind of yellowish area here. For for a yellow rose. I'm going to go into some of my cool color here. Let's grab some of my cool red violet. And just like what we've done before, I'm going to take some of my red violet. I'm going to divide my rose up into its three circles here. So I have a bottom center circle here like this. This is the, the bottom, and this will be the bottom of the bowl of the rose here for this cabbage rose that I have here. Now I'm just going to walk this up, and I want to just short stroke walk this up here like this that's going to put this kind of circle that you see here like that you can put a little um a warmer red into it as well like you see on this one i'll have that cool and then i'll have a splash of red see that red just bang right there sometimes into that one too sometimes i'll just come over and just go bang here's a splash of color right in there into the side and let's just take some of that right over here as well and that just again that just gives you a beautiful stroke flower that's going to have all this modeling of color in there so uh, you know an artist when they relax and you don't do too much blending or too much solid color painting you can make flowers that are so pretty so just relax and splash in a little color you know add a little accent color and splash some colors in you know if that's too bright for you just wiggle it a little bit and and tone her down just a bit but splash some colors in there and get some interest into your flowers now I want this flower to be uh, a little bit onto the uh, 
the yellow side so I'm going to keep my yellow here if you want more contrast you can come in here and add black in there like I've done before and I will do that on other ones it's what you want to do but the most important thing to remember is that you have your cool color here and your cool color here this is the deepest part of the shadow of your of your flower so your cool colors there your cool colors down here and then some warm color as you come out of that so I'm going to use some yellow here and I'll put some white out through here um, I like my whites and I always wiping my brush every time you see my brush disappear It's usually because I'm pinch wiping it like that I'm going to tap into a little yellow and then I'm just going to pick up that edge like we've done before See that edge of white that we have there and I'll just pick up just go boop and pick that up that edge Now sometimes when I'm testing the edge of the color I will come right up here to the front and since we're going to paint a cabbage rose this time We'll cut right across and see I'll cut right across and create that light colored edge there I like that sometimes then I will draw it around what I have to do is whatever I decide to do I've got to follow that kind of circular line there so I'll just give like a little indications here of you know pick up just a little more here a little indications covering that little that little circle that's right there that's what I like to do I'll wipe the brush we'll pick up and maybe even a little background color into that we will make a little softer color here just a little softer, maybe even a little pinky color with that too would be pretty here. Let's just try that. And we'll come in here and we'll just put on some curving petals here into the center, up and around like this. Maybe we'll change and get a little more yellow here as we come up here towards the front here. So you get this nice curving curve petals to it here and again see if I stroke it again and again like this it'll soften that color out so how much you leave up there that's kind of up to you how many times you put in there that's up to you color variation in there though is just wonderful okay sometimes like on to this one after I, I finish the flower I come back take some purple and stroke back through there you can make just a couple a small bowl in there you can make uh, like on this one many strokes back up into there there's going to be all kinds of variations and your job as an artist is to paint all those variations now with uh, with this particular cabbage rose that I have here, I'm going to be pulling the, the strokes this way and and uh, up kind of across the bowl. So you'll see like these, I'm pulling across the bowl this way, decorating across the bowl. With this one uh, that I have here, I will be pulling down. All of these will be pulling down this way. So I would take this and my next strokes would be pulling down to decorate this way. Whereas this one I'll be pulling across. If I'm going to paint the pulling across one like this, I'll just take a little bit more. And sometimes I will build this color up a little bit more down the bowl like this before I go too far. I will build that color because that because as we're softening out this building the color is causing it to advance here so I'll leave that that's pretty nice and then I'll build this uh, softer color here and uh, we'll just drop a little edge pick up another little edge right here like this now when you put on your next petals if you're going to put on another row of petals here try not to line them up so usually what I'll do is I'll step off to the side here like this and drop another one in and drop another one in like this and down to the side like that and so I have another another row and generally you got to follow some good rules or construction of the flower too like I said in the in lesson number one we want the smallest little curve inside here so here you see here's a small little curve the curve gets a little bigger as it goes out and just likewise the curve's going to get a little bit bigger as we get out here towards the end and i'll finally come out here with my largest curve out here to out onto these guys here these will be my big outside my saucer petals, my reaching petals of the flower here, I'll put those on. I just use the edge of that light, and this fusion just paints it beautifully. Just get right on the chisel of that fusion and use that. It puts that on so nice and soft. Then I'll tap into a little color. I model it, maybe even a little red in there, so I get a little bit of modeling. I love to paint with what I call the modeled brush. It's not a solid color. It's a model color. And then... I will pull in like this and pull across like this and down in like this and down like that. 
and then I will pull some in now. I'm, after I get past this halfway point, I'm going to curve my strokes here so that the flower rounds up. That's the most important thing. So here, somewhere past the halfway, on this side of the rose, the strokes are going to go in this way. On this side of the rose, on this right side here, they're going to pull in that way. Okay? So we'll pick up just a little bit more edge. Let's just drop that little edge in here. And we'll pull in and just like in lesson one sometimes i'll pull out sometimes i'll just stop my brush and just pull out like that so i get a little bit of a a color there just a little color then i can come in and pick up a little more white onto the edge and i can redefine my edges out here if i want to redefine so sometimes you see on my flowers very clear edges and that's because i've come back in and stroke them again a little bit clearer a little bit more crisp and light color here and we'll drop this in here and then we'll drop that in there and we'll pick up a little bit of shadow and I'm just going to reset that shadow right down in there and just kind of softly set that. You can incorporate and stroke any of that back in there if you want. And then as I come down here, maybe I'm going to pick up a little bit more red and strike just a little more red here. We'll have this as a yellow flower going just a little bit red. Then I'll pick up some of my yellow here again. I'm going to soften that with just a bit of that um, background. Model that together pick up my edge of my white and now I'll I will pick up here a couple of larger petals here now coming back down these will be larger because you're heading towards almost this size here so and then I'll pull down here like this pull these petals and the other roses we simulate those just by using that chisel remember we use just a little chisel there and set up some of those things. So I'll just stroke down like this and just add a few little strokes there and use just the edge if I need to to come in and put that stroke edge on that flower like that. Which I love just to pick up that little bead of white and use it like a little drawing, little liner brush almost. But it, it doesn't look like a liner brush because it's got the soft edge of that fusion. It's that fusion that's doing it. So here you get a uh, very beautiful, very soft little uh, flower here. Okay, And then you can come in and you can tap some little lights here like that. Okay, And you can even come back in if you wanted to lighten up the edge and add extra little petals in there if you think you need to put a petal in there to fill in. Just take your brush like this and just pick up that tiny little edge and that can be used to draw in any little petal on any side at any time. You can add some back down in here or re-edge right back down in here to put this one back up on top and front there like that if you wanted to. So there's a, a, a thousand different ways that you can do it. But that's your basic uh, cabbage rose that way. Let's take one here now. And let's take a little bit of our our um, our background uh, color here because I do like to paint that with a little bit of background. And let's paint one over here again. I just put a little bit of background on there. Okay, a little bit of color in there, and uh, let's paint kind of a violety one this time. Take my red violet down here. Let's add just a tiny bit of blue to that and a little bit of white. And we make kind of a violet color. That's kind of a pretty little color that'll sit nice with this. If I take a color like that, I like to take some of that color as well and come in and, and touch just a few little areas on the other flower just to incorporate those two together. And it just adds nice harmony to your painting. So a few little touches of that. And we'll take that just a little bit of blue, little a little violety color, not the red violet, a little bit more violet here. So we'll put some of that in, model this all up here. Let's drop it right down here like this. And let's just take a little bit of the blue and the violet here. Let's come in and let's just drop in a center here. The center of the rose. 
Let's drop in the bottom of the bowl, a little bit more red violet into that. Let's brush that into there. Maybe carry that a little farther over here. It's a shadow side, so I don't always treat the sides exactly the same. You can even go into a little bit of warmer yellow or even a little warmer red right up in here. So, you know, that violet can pick up some of that yellow color, which is really, really pretty here. And um, let's turn this a little so you can see this way. And let's draw one of the uh, types of roses that you'll be painting, pulling down. And it could be one that's uh, like this one that's here. Uh, it could be, you know, any kind of flower, even one that's like this one here that's more opened up. This one just has the same type of bowl. You see the same type of bowl there, but it doesn't have as many layers of the petal, so it looks more like an open flower. Um, let's start out with something like that. We'll take some of our violet color here and... We'll just put a little bit of white right over here, and I tap into it to pick up that light little edge. This light little edge is what I use to draw the the, uh, the top petals. And again, that has to curve. And see that sh see that circle that's there? That's what I want to kind of encompass with my petals. That little circle here, just kind of draw it around like that with that little edge. Just kind of encompass those petals. Now, if I'm painting one that's like this here. I will strike across the top, then I will continue that stroke. I would continue that stroke on down to the side like that. That's what gives you that particular look. I'm just going to, I'm going to soften that look a little bit. I'm going to pick up just a little white, a little heavier white here, and just pull down like this. So this starts the flower pulling down. I will leave just a little space, and notice I don't reload. I just leave a little space and just pull down like this. Now, now I'll reload because I'm coming back here towards the center. So I, if I'm in the center, I reload. If I'm not in the center, I just stroke it out like that so that the color runs out onto the side and gets heavier in here into the center. That's what you want to do. And uh, so we'll pick up a little more white here. We'll tap into that. Let's just draw on some bigger ones right out here like this. So we'll put one on here, one out here like this. Okay, we can also tap in a little bit uh, here into the center. Let's just curve those around like that. That's kind of pretty. And then I'll even tap into a little warmer red here. Let's just put on a, a second row. Sometimes I'll put on a second row. Sometimes I'll just build the light up here again. But I'm going to put on a, a just a, a second row, which is one that you find towards the cabbage roses in the tray, uh, the big, huge tray. And then I will tap into some more light, and I will pull down. So now they're getting lighter, see? And then let it run out here on the sides. And again, you're pulling this way. But then you've got to find that bowl. Curve. Curve that way, that way, like that. Okay. So start out this way. And then just curve around like this. Curve around. Follow this outside bowl. Do not curve out. A lot of my students will pull curving out. We don't want to pull this curving out like that. We want to pull down. If you want it lighter, just pick up more white and stroke again. If you want it lighter, pick up more white and stroke again. You can come back and drop on the little edges if you want. There. Let's take some of this light. Just tap, tap. See, I'm not stroking. I'm tapping. Stroking will blend too much and make just one color. You don't want to do that. With this soft little fusion, you do not need the stroke blend. So we're just going to pull in like this and pull in and pull in and pull in. And we'll just tap. I'm going to remove some of that light color because it's a little heavy in the brush. So I just tap it on the palette to remove it and let the color fade off as you go back there around that side back there. So we'll pick up more white because we're coming back here into the center again. And we'll curve that way back into the center again. So we'll pick up here and then just let this color run off. And sometimes I'll just whisper a little bit pulling out the other way as well. Just like that. So that works. Pick up a little more white. And that'll help me with the light. Um, now I start to watch 
my light edges and maybe I'm going to put this edge right here up in front and on top of that yellow one just by drawing an edge right there, a nice edge. It'll sit right on top of that one. Just like that. And then we'll go here. And down like that. And um, I will use just another little rounding stroke that I have there just to kind of fill that out. Now sometimes if I lose my shadow too much, I'll pick my shadow back up and I'll, I'll lift my shadow from the base out. You can actually physically lift the highlights back off revealing the shadow see so sometimes if I get too much I do that and I think it gives a beautiful look to the stroke a beautiful casual look to the stroke flower as well so and there I'll just add just a touch of red to this other side so I love that casual look to it here we go so it's a lot more, I want to say is I stroke it. I, it's not like I'm playing with it. I'm developing and building the flower, but I'm developing and building the flower in the stroke, in the confines of a stroke. But it's a, it's a much more relaxed and casual confine of a stroke, if that makes sense to you. Um, then we'll tap in. Let's just put a little yellow into the center here on this flower. Here just like that that just taps that guy in there so maybe I have the reds that's in there maybe we take just a bit of the yellow here just a little bit of it so you pick up just little traces of that yellow through the flower and that just it helps that harmony of those flowers so it helps those flowers kind of come together and again there so you have these two flowers here um, you would take you know, just like I did before here, I would take my black and my yellow, I'd start my green, and then if I want to adjust my green, I add a little bit of blue or something to that. Any kind of uh, darker leaves would come right up into this area right in here. Even some shadows into them coming around this way. You know, get your, your shadow greens in there, wipe that brush here, and you can... Uh, pull that shadow in you can put highlights on it there's you know you'll see all kinds of different ways if you have some uh, different leaves here different shaped leaves here coming in here we go just tap some of those around fill in sometimes I will get uh, especially on the big tray I will use some very structured leaves in and around the center and then as I go further out into the design, I start to get more light and casual with my strokes and with my leaves this way. So the, the center of the, that tray, the big huge uh, tray, they stay very strokey. And then as they get further out, so if you see like right in here, very stroked, very stroked, but then further out they get very, very casual. So I start out very stroked, very heavy stroked, and finally getting out here very casual. Again, that puts in a, uh, a very different, lighter, airier look uh, to the painting. And I like that. I like that look to it. So you can come out here and add a few uh, little leaves here. There's also going to be uh, into those lessons some tulips. The tulips are basically these petals that you see here. There's nothing big about them. They're basically these petals that you see and uh, you just you you just pull them into a tulip shape. That's all. So they're um, so when you see here, it's just like the same edging and stuff. And here you'll see the light edge here. You can see here uh, you'll see in the step photos I pull the light from the base out, and here some strokes back. So wherever you see the roundest part of the stroke, you know I pull it back that way. But here, since my highlight area is in here, sometimes I will highlight the base of the tulip as opposed to highlighting the uh, the, the tip of the tulip. So you know you can. 
you can do anything with these uh, flowers. This is why I like them. Sometimes I'll give the impression of a little vein line or something like that through the flower or through the through the uh, the leaf as well as you start to add some, you know, some leaves to it. Not very often do I put the base coat, a shadow, and a highlight. And most of the time I'm using what we call two-toned leaves. In most of the stroke pieces that we were emulating uh, through Nashco and, and uh, some of the other painted trays that you find in the 60s and 70s, we, they're, em they're emulated using two-toned leaves and three-toned flowers. So the flowers have a base coat, shadow, highlight, so they have more definition, more interest than a two-toned leaf that it only has a base and a shadow or a base and a light. So, and it's really a beautiful way to to paint those because they um when you're painting like that you're definitely decorating the the uh, flowers more than the leaves and so the flowers kind of stand out that's kind of a real pretty violety little color out there if you get too much on it there to soften it with just a bit of yellow but see you can paint back and forth and add these things okay all kinds of little flowers and little blossoms and little things that you have out there you know like little blossoms that I do I usually do very very quickly like if I was going to do a couple of them right out here um, I'll drop a couple like right, right in here and here I'll put on like a base color I'll take a cooler color and I just smash it down in there like that that'll be the cooler color there sometimes a tiny bit of black to get a nice little you know uh, really a good contrast there a warmer side here let's grab um let's grab a little yellow right in, right in here let's grab a little yellow let's not go too orange let's just grab some yellow and just smash that in there you again I, it's a casual type of stroking here so we'll just kind of smash that in there like that then we can take some light white with it and you can develop petals uh, sometimes like on some of these little guys I'll develop them uh, petals sometimes I'll develop it a little bit more into like the opening or beginning of a flower if I have two of them together like this sometimes I'll, I'll just develop one up here like this like it's a little bud here just kind of draw that around like that and then uh, if I have two real close together like this then maybe one of them I'll develop like that and then I'll add another little petals off to the side or back here like this one is beginning to open up so they're not all exactly the same here so it's just following the same kind of drawing or the same type of um, feeling to the flower drawing it around drawing around see that petal right there looks just like that petal that's right there Okay, so just kind of draw it around till you see your position and then um, we'll join all of this together here with some stems. Put a little bit of stem action here and a little bit more of that coming out and I would add extra. So sometimes I, some of these little guys right here, I'm stroking extra ones like going like this, pulling out like that and we'll just kind of fill up around this side here a few little extra leaves and shadows and out like that and then you have a pretty little a uh, stroke design that can go on uh, on anything and the beautiful thing about the little stroke designs like this is you painted it in less than 30 minutes you got this all done so the thing is you on a cabbage rose instead of you can pull down instead of stroking across all the way you're going to divide it up into smaller petals and you're going to use these petals and pull down this time as opposed to always pulling across like we do with the spiral roses, okay? So you have lots more lessons, okay, to paint up with until you finally end up with that big tray, but they're all going to follow that same type of thing. Watch the amount of color you have on your surface. That if I was to say there's one thing that's more important than another, it would be the amount of base color that you put onto the surface. And sometimes I don't use it. So try just like I showed you in lesson one, try it on a dry, try it on a little, try it on a more, see which one you like, because it does give you control. That combined with the fusion brush is the secret to these flowers, why you can paint them so fast and, and so pretty and get these different colors on them. I think maybe I'll add just a little bit of this little violet over here. Just, I just saw that, just a little violet would be, oh, that's kind of pretty.
So we'll just put a little bit over there, okay? Then carry your color around. Have a good time with painting the book. Thanks ever so much for joining me on uh, this book. I hope you enjoy it. Watch for more volumes, and we have a lot more books at the studio and at jansenartstore.com if you want to uh, continue trying the six colors of the Painted Simply System. I'll look forward to painting with you again over there soon, okay? Enjoy the book. Enjoy the rest of the lessons, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.